Hey guys, this is Rick coming at you with Weed to No Basis, the podcast for all things cannabis business related. Are you an entrepreneur? Have something you wanted to create, something you wanted to bring to life in the cannabis industry? Maybe you've always wanted to partake in one of the biggest industries in modern day history. This is the podcast to listen to. All right, guys, we're, we're live. We're, we're here with um, re- recording another cool episode of Weed to No Basis. Remember, guys, if you're watching this, it's because you two are, are listening in. It's because you two are on a weed to no basis. Today, it's, um, it's one of the cool episodes because, as you know, we have the guests sometimes or we'll have, a, uh, we'll have a topical kind of one-way conversation because this is all recorded. Or we talk about one of the hottest new things going on in the industry. And today, it's one of the cool ones because we have a, a good friend and a fellow cannabis entrepreneur. And you're going to really hear his story here in a little bit, uh, Mark Worcester. So, Mark, welcome to Weed to No Basis. Hey, 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 Rick Martinez. Good to be here. <laughs> nice. So one of the cool things, that, the beautiful things about recording these is we do some live and some on Zoom, and we can almost literally feel face-to-face. Where are you at right now? I am just south of Boston, Massachusetts, in the sweltering heat, although I know you're in Texas, and for you, sweltering heat is like twice what I'm at now, right? So yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm south of Boston. Nice. South of Boston. And folks, just to remember, when I look down, it's not because I'm reading my notes or sending text messages. I, I, I write a tremendous amount of content on my notepad. Nice. So, so Boston, are you born, you're born and raised Bostonian? Born and raised Bostonian, baby. Absolutely. Cool. Best place to be from if you're a sports fan, just got to say. Boston, yeah. For those, <laughs> I'm born and raised in L.A., and I know there may be some, some minor contention, but that's, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. a little bit, right, right. <laughs> so, I gotta, so I know some folks will be listening in, but I can see just the top of your shirt. I, uh, I want to just show the – there it is. There it is. And that's that, so a smart, baby. Love that shirt, and I just had to, I had to make sure that the audience got, the ones watching got a peek at it, because that's the name of your company, Nurse Mark, right? It is, it is, and the tagline is Health, Happiness, Cannabis. Health, Happiness, Cannabis. cannabis. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Now, um, tell, f- fill us in. You know, I, I don't want to read the intake form. I kind of would rather you just yeah. tell, tell us what, what Nurse Mark is, what you do, who you help, you know, kind of those g- general, important entrepreneurship questions. Absolutely. So, so Nurse Mark, me, I am a, first off, I have a bachelor's in nursing. I uh, am a, a certified cannabis nurse. So I've been trained on the use of cannabis in the context of how it helps uh, people uh, feel better with different uh, things that are going on in their lives. And Nurse Mark, the community is the largest global community of empowered healthcare providers. So I'm creating a community for primarily nurses. So my, my demographic, my people are nurses, CNAs, LPNs, RNs, NPs, you know, that whole, the, the, those really are my people. So those are the folks that I'm working with to empower them to really go out and change the world, to, to, to make the world more healthy. And that includes using cannabis. As a, as a methodology to help people feel better. Nice. Now, um, we've known each other for a bit through other, yeah. uh, other parts of our life. And so what, what's inter- there's, there's interesting. I, I want to point out some other interesting p- uh, parts and then uh, for you to share with the audience because you, your career hasn't always been in nursing. You're, you started as, let's just say, a traditional entrepreneur. Can yeah. you kind of fill us in like how you're, and, and I'm going to say this, you know, you, yeah. you had a seven figure business prior to Nurse Mark. Yeah. So you've cut mm-hmm. your chops, you've done stuff and then segue. Can you share a little bit more about that kind of that journey? Yeah. Yeah, man. The, the, you know, it, you mentioned it, traditional entrepreneur. So most small businesses start as, you know, like a technician's in the field and he figures out he can do it better than the boss that he doesn't really like to work for. And he goes out and, you know, hangs a shingle and starts. And that's exactly what I did back in 1987, way back before the internet. I know it's crazy, right? No internet. Wow. What do we do? Um, I remember my first cell phone was like a 20 pound bag phone. And the only other person I knew who had one was my business partner who happened to be my brother. So it's like, you know, who do you call? You call the other guy, but that was a competitive advantage. Yeah. So we were in the technology business and we just grew that business and had, had great success. We're in the Inc 500 list twice. We, um, you know, really, 
kept that thing growing. And today it's, you know, 30 plus years later, it's still operating without me in it, which is beautiful. To be clear, this was not a cannabis related business, correct? Not at all. It was straight up technology, business to business. I'm talking computer networks, computer network wiring, servers, telephone systems, all the basic, um, you know, technology for businesses as it, as it came out, right? So there weren't any real computers other than mainframes. So we did a little bit of work with that in the beginning, but then the PC boom came. Then, the, you know, it all distributed um, server-based stuff. And so, you know, we had to move with whatever technology came out. So we got really good at figuring out what the next wave was going to be and growing into it. Nice. I love it, growing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's now those yeah. words... All those words that we that we always take for granted, they have such a new meaning for us in this. They industry. do, they do. <laughs> it, you know, and, and it's funny that you mention it because speaking of growing, I just got um, a, a a new batch of of beautiful hemp seeds because I have a hemp grow license in Massachusetts, and we're gonna we're gonna plant a crop. So there's a, there's a lot of things going on here, not only the, the nurse mark community, but also, you know, a hemp grow process company on, on, on another sort of tra trajectory. It's, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. And we're, we're going to come back to that because I, I want to, um, I want to tap into some of the things you're doing uh, mm -hmm. to, just to give a little teaser for folks to stay on because you're, you're also about to enroll potentially in a master's program in cannabis. So we're going to touch on that a little bit. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot, there's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely the most fun that I've ever had because it's, it's where I'm supposed to be and it's what I'm supposed to be doing. It's um, unarguably one of the best feelings when you feel connected to call it your purpose or your mission right. or your life's vision. And yeah. um, you, you said something just in your description of, um, you mentioned a few things. You said the word technicians, and I'm going to guess that comes from Michael Gerber's book. Is that where you got that from, the e -myth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really bought into his um, stuff early on. You know, I used the e -myth and I really put it into practice in my business. And, you know, I've done that with a few different folks, you know, Vern Harnish and, Gino Wickman. I mean, as these, as these, um, you know, different, uh, books come out on management and corporate culture and operations, you know, I'd take, you know, the best out of all of them and kind of mash it all together. So that did come from the e-myth. Nice. Love it. I, I, I um, and those are things that I think every entrepreneur should be aware of, especially okay. when in such a nascent industry of um, one of the terms that, you, that you're using. I think that they're fantastic. And then the books, Emeth, uh, Vern Arnish from Gazelles, and then Gina Wickman from Traction, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vern was uh, Rockefeller Habits, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's just there's some, all of them, all of them work and all of them have value. It's just applying it that becomes the trick, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, also, you also mentioned a competitive advantage. You were talking about the, the 20 pound cell phone and then you had your brother and you said it was a competitive. So ex tease out a little bit, um, maybe at kind of a very basic level, what does it mean to have a competitive advantage in the cannabis industry today? What does that mean? Oh, um, you know, it, it it really comes down to the story that you're going to tell. So it's about the brand and the story that you're going to tell. What, what makes you different? Now, I was in the technology business. There were a million people in the technology business. And how did we differentiate our business from all of the million other ones out there? It's the same thing in the cannabis business. It's about creating that story around why your particular offering is different than what all of the other people are offering. I totally feel that there's room for everybody. You know what I mean? There's room for everybody. If you're smart about it and, and you can create that story and brand, then you're going to survive. You're going to make it. Yeah, totally agree. And I, I love that you pointed that out, competitive advantage, because uh, you know, one, one can say right now in the cannabis industry, it's the barrier to entry is relatively low um, as such. There are people who are jump, they're flooding in. And one can say that the, the ones who will survive and thrive are the ones 
who understand competitive advantage and their story and their brand and be able to express like what makes you different, right? Right, right. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy to do, but you have to figure out what that, what that unique position is that you bring to the table. And, gotcha. if, and if you don't have one, find one, make one, figure it out. It's out there, you know? It's definitely out there. You got to just, you got to, you got to, like you say, tease it out. You got to figure it out. You got to tease it out, right? Yeah. Tease it out, man. Tease it out, man. <laughs> and I'll tell you. This is so many meetings behind. Great segue. You know, right? You know, you're, you're talking about teasing it out. I, I am a huge proponent of like mastermind group of that kind of, you know, get people around you who are, who are better than you. Like I've always surrounded myself with people that are, further down the trail or done it before or who I feel are like, you know, not necessarily smarter than me, but more experienced, you know, and, and get in, get in that group. And that's where the magic happens. That's where you tease that stuff out. Right. I mean, we both, we come, both come from EO entrepreneurs organization. And that's, you know, how we know each other. And you know, that, that EO is nothing but that. Right. Yeah. You know, that's an interesting point. You're right. We, um, uh, we we came to know of each other through Entrepreneurs Organization, a global nonprofit of just some of the coolest entrepreneurs in the world. Amazing. Amazing. And to to the point, you know, some of the things, and you might agree, the the quote or the phrase, "Your network is your net worth." Um, that's yeah. where we connected through, yeah. it's, in a simple yeah. way, a mastermind group. And mm-hmm. um, there, there's something beautiful when you connect with like-minded individuals. But to your point, folks who have maybe been to the place where you want to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They've climbed that mountain. They've had those experiences and it doesn't even need to be in the same industry because there's commonality through that process. Right. You know, it, it's like you said, the cannabis industry, the barrier of entry is pretty low right now and the market is flooded. And I mean, I've seen that in other businesses in the technology business, you know, DSL is a perfect example. When internet first came out, DSL was this huge way to, you know, connect to the internet. And there were a, thousand providers of DSL. Two years later, there was probably four. But those four knew what their, knew what their story was and they lasted. They got, they got through that process. And I don't think it would be that drastic in this particular industry. But, you know, this commonality. Like this, there was a low barrier of entry. Everybody came in and then, there was, then it, it shook out and only the real people survived. You're right. DSL were the days of like dial up and it made all the noise. It's yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh man. Dang. Mark, Mark, I, I think we're dating ourselves here. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't even like to mention it. I know. <laughs> That's okay. We're, we're both in a super cool industry now though. So we're, <laughs> yeah, man, we're both in a super cool industry and we're both super cool. So it's perfect for us. This, we were built for this, man. Damn right. I love it, man. I'm gonna we're both we're super cool in this room. We're both super cool. <laughs> so so you you come from traditional entrepreneurship um and a technology company. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was there was a segue or or an event, whether it's equity or exit. Mm-hmm. And at some point you decided that I want to enter the cannabis industry. Tell us about maybe it was a moment, maybe it was, and then why nursing? And kind of tease that out, that, that journey from... I, guess, I mean, this, it's like a backstory around it, right? I knew I wasn't happy in the business that I was in. I mean, I could, I could have stayed in that business and, and made money and not worked hard. I mean, I was on autopilot. It was great. It was, you know, 30 years and running. But I knew it just wasn't, there wasn't a passion there. I wanted more out of my, out of my life, out of my, you know, what was my life purpose, Right. So I went to nursing school in 2012, I started. So I did nights and weekends, still running the company. I had no idea what I wanted to do with it, but I knew I wanted to do something in healthcare. So I, I got my nursing degree and, uh, and then I just, I got to the point where I knew I needed to exit the last business. So I worked on that for like a year. And finally, my brother and I, who was, you know, my partner still uh, in, is now the owner of the company, came to an agreement and I exited in at the end of 2017. And, you know, so, so EO, the mastermind group really had a lot to do with that because it kind of gave me, I I looked around and I saw people who had built a company, exited, 
started another company, exited. Before that, that was foreign to me. I didn't know that people did that. I'm like, you build a company and you just like, this is your life. This is what you get. Then you get in the group and you see these people who just do this continually over and over again. I'm like, oh, what is this craziness? I can, I can sell out. Yeah. <laughs> so that was it. I was, I was gone. I was out. So then the cannabis thing comes in. Oh my God, I fell in love. I fell in love with a cannabis entrepreneur, as a matter of fact, and she's an amazing entrepreneur. And so we were together and I worked on her business with her because I had exited mine. I didn't have anything to do really. And it was, uh, I, I got a, a, into her business and just absolutely was floored by what cannabis can do for people. And I was, you know, from a, from a health standpoint, and, you know, I never do anything half-assed, so I just dove in. Any certification program I could take, any research that I could find, I mean, went all on the scholarly research sites, and I researched every aspect and research study that I could read, I digested. And, uh, you know, the more I read, the more I understood that this was just, you know, this was, you know, life-changing for me and for anyone else who would, you know, um, really understand just how powerful this is. I love that story. I don't think I had heard it in that kind of detail before. So this is, um, this is very cool. So traditional business, uh, yeah. you and your brother, you had an exit and you became, you decided to uh, begin to uh, pursue, if you will, your life's purpose and you became yeah. a nurse. Mm -hmm. um, then you fell in love with the cannabis entrepreneur. So, yeah. so you weren't necessarily looking to jump into the no. industry. I had no idea. And, and then, you know, her, her story is that she, um, she had breast cancer. And so she had to go through breast cancer treatment. She couldn't take opiates. She's allergic to them. Didn't have anything to really work with the pain. She looked around, she found cannabis. The more she looked into it, the more she determined or found out that, you know, it wasn't really being addressed in the marketplace and being an entrepreneur like she is. She's like, well, hell, okay start a company, start, start getting people well. And, uh, and I just, I just, you know, was so in awe of that. And, uh, you know, and then I got, I got deeper and deeper into it. And I said, wow, this is just, this is, this is something really, again, life-changing for a lot of people. Nice. And so I just want to make sure that I'm pointing this out to the audience because you didn't just, you use the word you dove in, but before that you did a lot of research, you studied, you were, um, you became my word, not yours, but basically a shadow of, of the person you were um, dating at the time and you learned a lot. And then what was the, when was the moment or where you decided I need to become and or start Nurse Mark? You know, it would, so when I, when, when we were working together, Jenny and Jenny and I, when we were working together, we were talking about, you know, nurse Mark, um, persona, because, you know, it's just, it makes sense from a health and wellness standpoint that, you know, the nursing community or nurse representative would be involved in this. And so, you know, when, when we stopped dating, you know, I was really, um, I, I knew that I was going to be in the cannabis business and with it just wasn't any question because of what I had done in research and, you know, how powerful this thing really is. You know, like October of last year, I think I, I just jumped in and said, you know what, nurse Mark, that's definitely it. Now it started out as like, okay, I'm just going to sell CBD like everybody else. And I'm going to do this sort of thing. The more that I, you know, hashed it out with my, um, with my mentors and my, my team of people, you know, the more I whiteboarded it, the more I realized that this, it was much bigger than just the cannabis play. This was about nursing. This was about community. This was about empowering the nursing community to really be at the forefront of the healthcare industry. Um, and so it's taken on this whole life of its own. And so, you know, nurse Mark is, is the representative of, of that whole, movement nice sorry there's a there's a helicopter right outside my window and i was like i know i heard it real loud I, I don't think you can hear it but i looked up and oh, i'm like no, i'm hearing it at all so 
And so interesting about that is that you didn't deviate too far, or one can say you were staying in your lane. Basically, you took what you already knew and you segued that into the, the green rush, the industry. Yeah, yeah, yep. Nice. Yep, absolutely. So, um, so Nurse Mark was born. Um, and now, so here's, here's the interesting part. So you're, you're in this, you're, I'm looking at the byline. So the largest global community of empowered healthcare providers, we offer experience on cannabis exercise, nutrition, and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And I, I love it. Not, and not just as a fellow registered nurse um, or a consumer or somebody who cares, but because you, you found a niche. But here's what I want to ask you is a minute ago, you held up the hemp seeds because mm -hmm you are about to plant hemp. Tell us how that happened because now, because now, now, you know, it's like, so you, you've launched Nurse Mark and now yeah. you're basically going to be a farmer. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, not me personally. I might plant a few of the seeds, but dude, I'm not going to be the farmer. Dude, my first job at the age of 12, I worked on a farm. I don't want to hoe the row, man. And I want to, I don't want to be in the field anymore. That was hard work. I. Uh, yeah, so the, I, I think it goes back to being an entrepreneur. You know, when I was running the last company, if I could have, if I could have controlled the supply chain at a much deeper level, my business would have been much better off. But I was at the whim and fancy of the manufacturers that I represented it. So being being in the hemp grow process side, I get to maintain a little more control over what my product looks like, right? Not that the manufacturers that I work with don't do don't do a good job of what I what I want them to do. It's a recognition of later on in the process as this uh, industry develops and we're, we're able to really develop more of the chemovar and the strain that we want within the hemp plant itself. I'd I'd love to be able to you know work with folks in that area to develop you know the exact chemovar that I want out of the plant that I think is beneficial for health for different health reasons. So it's about control really. Nice. So yes. it wasn't, so it wasn't that you saw a shiny object. It's that you had um, a, a vision, you know, you have nurse yeah. Mark and mm -hmm. this is, this is now the ability for you to have greater control and say so over that, that entire supply chain. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And, you know, and of course, you know, Again, going back to the entrepreneur thing, if I control all of that, there's a little bit more margin and all of those things, right? So, it, it, you know, it's going to fund this community. It really is going to um, help support it. So we're about the same age. And uh, as you're talking, um, you know, we've hung out several times and not only in Texas, we've hung out and we're Vegas. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's, right. And Vegas. It's, it's crazy how the industry, we find ourselves in um, places we may never have been before, meeting people we had never imagined meeting before. But um, yeah. you're also, you're a dad, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm just curious. This is a dad question. And for those folks out there is, was there ever a point where you had to have a conversation with your kids? And I know your kids aren't young, per se. My kids are already grown up in their 20s. And yeah, yeah, yeah. My, um, mine are grown up, for sure. Yeah. Was there any ever any kind of like, dad, what the hell are you doing? You're in you're in this industry and you know, <laughs> would any of that ever emerge you know not with my kids uh, they're that they're you know shockingly they're not surprised when i do anything right you know they, they've lived this whole entrepreneurial life with me and it's like been down every pathway so they're just like oh yeah okay well this is the next thing you know who that had to, had to have the conversation with was with my dad i had to have the conversation with him because he's like what are you crazy He's a, four, you know, he's a retired state trooper. So his perspective on this whole thing is a little bit different. So I had to have the conversation with him. What are you crazy? What are you, why would you want to do that? And, you know, so we had a good sit down chat and um, yeah, he's on board. That's good to know, you know, and, and you, you said that, you know, as an entrepreneur, I think our kids accept a little bit of um, looniness from us. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. What appears to be looniness, but we know what we're doing, Rick. We do yeah. No, <laughs> it makes perfect sense to us until we don't know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what's funny is is I think a lot of folks think of entrepreneurship as this gamble and risk, but the truth is, most of the time, entrepreneurs have have thought through. Um, oh yeah, before. oh yeah. So, 
So where, where one sees an entrepreneur pull the trigger, a lot of the times we've actually thought through up into the point where we pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that goes into that decision before you ever do it. And yeah, there's, there's inherent risk in everything, uh, especially in this industry at this particular moment. But, um, but yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, there's a lot of waking up at you know, three o'clock in the morning and saying, oh man, oh, 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 I got to go write this down. And then you get to the whiteboard, you write that thing out and then you, and then you go back to bed and you go to sleep. Right. But there's, there's a lot of that that goes into it. And then you kind of just flesh all that out over time. And I mean, I've been working on this. I wanted to, I wanted to have this launched by February and here it is. It's going to launch on August 12th. Well, you know what? Every time I peeled back a little bit more, of the onion, I had to peel back a little bit more of it, right? And and it gets into the into the nitty gritty detail, and you kind of it 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 kind of shifts and moves, so things push out. But you know what? August twelfth, boom! That is my deadline. Yeah, interesting thing about that too is that um, uh, uh, is maybe the lesson, at least what I heard is is mm -hmm. don't be in such a rush to get things done. But on the other hand, is it doesn't have to be perfect to launch. Man, you know, that good, good thing that you brought that up because there's, there's a lot around that. You know, you, you get into it and you feel like it's got to be perfect on day one. Bottom line is it doesn't, you know, you just got to get launched. My, my coach uh, pushes on me on that all the time because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And he's like, no, you got to get on the court. You got to get out there and be in action. You know, don't wait. It'll, you know, if it's not perfect on day one, cool. You'll fix it as you go, but at least you'll be out there and going. You're right. If you wait for it to be perfect, it's never going to happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, um, it's interesting you mentioned that uh, because this show that we're recording, Weed to No Basis, we mm -hmm. actually thought about it and we designed it and, and sat down and even put a plan around it over a year ago. Like it was probably 13 months ago. And I was, there was a little bit of uh, paralysis analysis on my part because I kept thinking, no, we got to have the right thing here. Yeah. We got to have the right microphone there. Yeah. We got to have, and so we didn't launch and it took us months and months and literally look at us right now. We're on our computers. I have these old school I Apple iPhone headphones. <laughs> and to the point- I wasn't like, going to say anything, man. I was just going to let it roll. <laughs> but but to your point is like there comes a, it's like you got to go done is better than perfect so go just get on the court and go mm -hmm. yeah just nice. get on the court and go absolutely mark so um so you've got a lot going on you're I do. you mentioned prior to getting on you also mentioned um i can't let this go um mm -hmm. getting a master's degree in cannabis so be, because you have so much free time so tell us yeah about you know i have i have a few spare moments i mean this <laughs> Luckily, I love going to school. I mean, I, I didn't when I was in high school. As a matter of fact, I quit in my senior year, but I really love school. I love the challenge and I love, I love to learn new things. And so the University of Maryland has the first um, master's in um, medical and cannabis therapeutics. So it's the only one in the country at this point that I know of. And yeah, so I threw in an application last week. I mean, worked on it for a little bit, got my recommendations and all of my transcripts from my last school. And you know what? My, my, my uh, name is in the hat. And we'll see uh, next week if they're smart enough to decide to include me in the program. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little, little bit of co the confidence edge right there. <laughs> Absolutely. They need me, Rick. They need yeah. me. <laughs> it won't be the same without you. That's right. That's right. That's the way I like to look at it. <laughs> if they proceed without you, the graduation day, they're going to say, you know, it would have been we a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Things would have been, you know what? I'm, I'm already channeling. They'll have to just give me an honorary master's at some point. <laughs> they, you know, I'll do the, I'll do the uh, speech at uh, commencement, you know, one way or another, babe, one way or another, I'm getting that degree. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going down. It's going to manifest. It's going down. You got to believe. So you have, um, you've got a lot going on and um, a lot of really, really good stuff. Positive. You're moving the needle in the right direction. Yeah. And um, I got to throw one more thing in there as I'm looking over my notes is you're also coming to our conference this fall, Talk Hustle Connect. And you are oh, going to yeah. be super excited. I, I, I honestly am too, because you have 
one because you're you're a cool dude and people are going to see that and when they come and see you in person i'm a lot of fun baby you've got an incredible um wealth of knowledge of traditional business and then you know hemp grow license and the nurse smart community potentially uh, a master's in cannabis so um, i just had to kind of throw that out there as a teaser for the folks that are going to listen to this because this is the caliber of folks who are coming down and um, Come on down. You gotta be there. You gotta be there. If you're listening right now, you gotta be at this event. There is no doubt it's gonna be the best one that you've been to. Probably the best one that you'll ever be at. <laughs> so you need to be there. Yes, yes. Love it. Love it. So um we're going to start kind of seg segueing this down. And in a minute, I'm gonna ask you to give us your best contact info and, yeah. and share it with the audience. But um, so let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. If I am if what would I be looking for that I Google and find you? Or what's the problem that I need solved where I go search for? We're Nars, Nars, I was going to say Nars Merck. Yeah. What is, what is the problem I have where Nurse Mark is the answer? You're, you're going to want to, to talk to Nurse Mark in the community if you want to really understand why cannabis is effective, why it's a good thing for you. There's a lot of information out there, but who knows if it's true or if it's not true. When we get down to the real, you know, the real research, you know, we peel back all of that stuff that's out there, the fluff, the marketing fluff, and we get to the, to the stuff that really matters. And also, you know, cannabis isn't the be all end all. I mean, I, I hate to say it and you, everybody is listening. I know you're in the industry and you want to say that it is, but you know, guess what? It, it's not going to, it's not going to solve all your issues. If you're sitting on the couch, eating fast food all day long and you never exercise and you never, you know, so you, you, there are other things in those exercise, nutrition and mindfulness Nurse Mark and the community were really experts on that. And it really is about creating a powerful life. So although my community, my community is, is based, you know, focused on nurses, the reason it is is because the nurses are going to share that with everybody else. So they're going to they're gonna embrace it and own it, and then they're going to share it with everybody else. That's how transformation works, man. Gotcha. Yeah, one could argue that nurses are at the tip of the healthcare sphere. And so... Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Love it. And then with what you have cooking, um, mm -hmm. the, um, not literally, but the hemp farm and all that, you potentially yeah. will be able to have an offering. Uh, some oh, sort of, like yeah. a product. We, have, a product. Part of it. we have an, we have an offering. Yeah. Yep. Very interesting. So really if we zoom out currently nurse Mark is a service based offering. And mm -hmm. um, one of the things we've talked about in green seed and our, and our accelerator is that if you're a service business, you'll eventually have a product. And if you're a product, you'll eventually have a service. Right. And so what you've, what, what I'm hearing, if I can kind of tease that out is that um, <laughs> you've launched as a service and now you're just doing what an entrepreneur does is not chasing shiny objects, but potentially going to have a hemp based product offering in the oh, new. Yeah. Oh, day one, we'll have a hemp based offering. Absolutely. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Powerful yeah. lessons, you know, beyond, beyond the cool conversation and the cool t-shirts we both have on. This is, <laughs> yeah. I, didn't even, I didn't even call to say, hey, wear your, wear your white with green and black. <laughs> Look, we just natural, man. We're it's, a natural team. Natural. <laughs> it just works. That's love it. it. Yeah. There, there's been a lot of, um, and I, I got to say, I love when you said, uh, we talked about farming and you said, I don't want to hoe the row. I wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I did enough of that, man. I did enough of that. I don't oh. want to hoe the row. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So, so tell us, Mark, for the people who are listening in, they're either watching or they're on their headphones. Um, and if you're listening in, please don't, don't pull your phone out to type this in. Just go back. Where can, where can we find you? So best way to find me right now is Instagram, Nurse Mark W, Facebook, Nurse Mark. I have a page. Uh, Website's coming up on August 12th. That's nursemark.co, nursemark.co. And you can find me on nursemarkpodcast.com. I have a podcast too. 
health, happiness, cannabis. And I have had some of the most interesting guests, although not as interesting as your guest today, Rick. But I have had some really stellar guests on the podcast, and I think you'd really enjoy it. So Spotify, iTunes, Google, boom, Nurse Mark Podcast. Nice. So you're everywhere. And, and, if, and you can also be found literally in, in Boston. So <laughs> Right now in Boston. You're right. Exactly. I can be found in Boston, soon to be San Diego or New York or San Antonio or yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Spread, it's, life. it's a great life. Spreading the nurse Mark love. That's right. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Very, Very cool. I've loved this conversation. I, I just, I've loved everything about it. I love what you're doing. Yeah. This has been so cool. And um, I can't wait um, for people to hear this and to connect with you direct and um, to really oh, share it. Awesome. Love it. Um, parting words? Any parting words? Uh, get out of the stands and get onto the court. Get busy. Nice. Get out of the stands, get onto the court. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Entre entrepreneur's battle cry. You know it. Sweet. Yeah. Mark, thanks for coming on. Rick, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that's, that was Nurse Mark. Um, Mark, Mark Wusta or Mark Wusta. Mark Wusta, where I'm from, it's Wusta. Yeah, Mark Wusta from, uh, from Boston. Uh, remember, guys, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, uh, it's because you two are on a we to know basis. Mark, thank you for coming on, and we'll talk to you here real soon in San Antonio. Peace. Peace. Peace.